Afrikaans. Daar is een groot verschil tussen genade en genade. <laughs> because in Afrikaans, there is mercy is genade and grace is genade. Because we don't understand the difference. Um, uh, there's, you know, we, we must understand the grace of God. And I thought that was pretty cool. You know, I, I think it's lacking. Because when, when you in legalism, like many of us have been, and we try to impress God, and, you know, um, one of the guys from youth told me um, the other day that this guy says, Nee, so long jy, how does he, so long jy kerk toe gaan op a sondag, this, that's the time that you, that you have God time. Then the rest of the week you can do what you want to. That's religion. That's, uh, that's, um, yeah, that's legalism. That's, that's, it's useless. It's useless. Yeah. So, but in our attempt to break free from legalism, like you, you may not eat bacon and you may not do that stuff. We've gone, so many people have gone all the way the other way to say, okay, well, now that you're free from legalism, you can do whatever you want to. And, um, that's also not true. It does carry some truth that you can. There's nothing that you can do that will make God love you more. There's nothing that you can do that will make God love you less. But if we're going to rule and reign in this life, it requires us to, to receive grace from God to, to rule and to reign and to, to do things. And, and, and it's interesting, it says, when we go to receive the grace, we first need to get mercy. <laughs> Because, and, and mercy is different because grace and mercy is different. I'm going to give you the definition. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. And, and God is really generous with both. <laughs> he'll give you mercy and He'll give you grace. Uh, it's so good. It's so good to know that no matter what you've done, you can go to the throne and you'll get mercy. Amen. Yeah? Come on, man. And you can go all that you like and think you're gonna, you've been so good. You know, some, some of us sing the song, All my life I have been faithful. <laughs> and all my life I have been so, so good. It's not really. <laughs> it's the goodness of God. It's, and it's his, <laughs> it's, his, it's his mercy. So nothing that you do is going to impress him. It's like, yes, no, well done. Well, you know, righteous living doesn't impress God. But righteous living is important. It is important. Why is it important? Because it's, it's ruling and railing, reigning in life. It's living above what everybody else is victims to. Do you understand? So someone else might be caught in, in, in habits and addictions, but Jesus died so that you can be free from habits and addictions. So when you understand, I get mercy because I've missed the mark. Then I understand, okay, well, this grace, I mustn't really take it for granted. I need to actually, hey, this favor over, over um, the hardships in life, God has actually given me grace to rule and reign. So that's why mercy, mercy is a very important ingredient in understanding the grace of God. Because we've hammered grace, 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 and we've misunderstood in our attempt going from legalism. We've gone to this side and said, no, don't worry. Everything is fine, guys. Everything is fine. Just carry on. God loves you. And that's, that's not the gospel. So um, in, in, instead, we should, we, should, we should never judge people. But if someone is stuck in something that is not right, the grace of God can help them, <laughs> can free them. So we don't tell them, no, by grace, it's cool. No, by grace, you can be free. Okay, do you understand? So that's, that's the... I think the most important element, God is merciful to your sins. But He's given you grace so that you can, that you can break free from them. Um, so that's why He said, okay, I'm just doing, this is just last week's quick uh, just recap. So that's why when, when Jesus stood in front of the adulteress, He says, hey, I don't condemn you. I don't condemn you and He had all the right to. But he says, I don't condemn you. And he says, go and sin no more. When he said, go and sin no more, he didn't put an or else there. <laughs> he didn't threaten her. He said, go and sin no more, meaning I care about your lifestyle. Don't live a destructive lifestyle. 
Come on, I'm freeing you from this. Don't, don't go back to old ways and, and, and because you're not condemned. <laughs> go back to freedom. Go into freedom. So that's why Galatians says it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. So think about that. You know, um, we all, we all at times, and we're going to also speak about that today, we all deal with certain things, habits, routines, um, things that we, we get stuck in. And um, I laugh because um, the, the scripture in Galatians, uh, Romans chapter 5 says that when you receive the grace of God, that it will cause you to rule and reign in this life. Or some people can't even rule and reign in the kitchen. Some people can't even rule and reign, you know, by like cutting the grass or <laughs> whatever. My, my point is because we, we get in like routines and things, you know. And, and, and even small things like that, um, God is able to. It's, it's cheesy, I know, but it's uh, an example that maybe everybody wants to rule and reign, but something's got to change in you, and the grace of God will allow you to, to change. You know, everybody wants to change the world until you have to get up a little bit earlier in the morning, or you have to make your bed, you know. So those are, those are some... some some cool key elements. So the important thing as well that we're speaking about is your conscience. Take your, take your concordance or just do a search in your phone and look up the word conscience and you'll see what a big role our consciences play in our, in our, <laughs> in our faith. It can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. It can be your friend. It can be your enemy. Because the Bible says that if our conscience do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. That's very dangerous, remember? Because sometimes if your conscience don't condemn you, it can be as a result of self-righteousness. <laughs> so you actually have to realize, okay, conscience is not because of good works, it's because of what Jesus has done. So when I approach God, like I said, it's not all my life I have been faithful. It's, yes, Lord... Amazing grace. Amazing grace. And so when I approach the throne with, with, um, with boldness, it's in the fact of what Jesus did for me. So that's what purifies my conscience, not my righteousness, because it says my righteousness is as filthy rags. <laughs> so you think you're good to, to, you know, you weigh it out to God's righteousness, it's like filthy rags. But the good news is, that's why Jesus died for you, so that you can not just become righteous, but that you can be the righteousness of God. Eh? So, so good. Um, and so it's a, very, it's a very interesting because you'll find it to be a wrestle in your prayer life. You know, what, what's hindering my prayers from being answered? What am I doing wrong? What did I do wrong? Lord, why aren't you listening? No, there you're trying to impress God. What did I do wrong? What did I miss? No, there you're making it a law. It's not a law. It's the fact that Jesus died for you. So when I understand, it's nothing that I do right or wrong. It's in the, can I apply the blood of Jesus to my conscience before I approach the throne of God? Okay, uh, it's actually simple. It sounds complicated, but it makes sense. Because um, boldness without reverence is arrogance. If, if I imagine, you, you, you can see on the... Uh, take a rugby tournament or a cricket tournament. You get everybody, okay guys, we're going to walk over these guys. We're going to walk over them. And then you go and then they walk over you. Then there's the other side and he says, okay guys, these guys are really good. You need to be very, very careful. And eventually everybody's so careful they walk over them. But he says boldness and reverence. So when I go to God... I realize this God, God is the creator of heaven and earth. This God, I mean, I mean, awe and wonder of how awesome it is. That's reverence. So now how do I go to God in reverence and be bold about it? This is awesome. Wow. Oh, I must come in boldness. You know, it's in effect. Thank you. What you did was enough for me to stand in front of you. That's boldness. 
That is confidence. Confidence in the blood of Jesus. Confidence in the finished work of the cross. So you have to be mindful of it. Amen. Amen. I think it's so cool. It's so cool. So the conscience. So remember, um, let's, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9. And this will affect your life. This will affect your, your prayer life. This will affect your, <laughs> your business, the way you do business. Um, and, and all of those things. All right, Hebrews chapter 9. Yes, the Word of God is awesome. We were speaking the other day again at the youth about how important expression is. And I wonder, you know, remember that old analogy about the messages on the phone, people misinterpreting messages. You send it in a good way, it's received in a bad way. And you're on the other side saying, yes, that's not what I meant. Sometimes I think maybe God is behind pulpits on Sundays. No, that's not what I meant. I didn't mean that. (laughs) Hebrews 9. Ah, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 14. Hebrews 9, verse, um, verse 14. How much more surely shall the blood of Christ, who by virtue of His eternal Spirit... Okay, his own pre-existent divine personality has offered himself as an unblemished sacrifice to God. He will purify our consciences from dead works and lifeless observations to serve the living God. So he purifies your conscience. So he removes the guilt. (laughs) He removes the shame of what you've done so that you can live how? Like free from those things. So that you can rule and reign in life. So the blood of Jesus purifies your conscience. Um, just think about, you know, we, have, you ever, have you ever been in a little bit of a conflict with a person? You guys are not understanding each other like a, And it's not good. It's the whole time it's not bad. And then all of a sudden, you just can't handle it anymore. And so you guys go at each other and you start fighting, right? And then after you've had your say, you realize that you were misin- misunderstanding the person and vice versa. And then you feel bad. But then you know what's so awesome about feeling bad is finally that reconciliation moment. That like, I'm sorry. I understand. And all of a sudden, that thing between the two of you is like, is gone and it's actually you you're so glad that you had that conflict i don't know if you guys know what 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 i'm talking about just so that stuff is out the way problem sometimes when we try to try to live righteously we don't understand what righteous living is when we try to live righteously we missed out on that on those cool moments with god like yes i missed it now because when god like i said last week when god gives you a clap He's like, yes, Lord, just clap me again. That was so good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but the grace of God is so good that it corrects your heart without condemnation. He comes in and instead of like pointing it out, he actually empowers you to say, okay, go this way this time. And it's like, yes, that's, that's so good. So I think when we approach God and apply the blood of Jesus to our consciences, it means I need mercy. And when I receive mercy, it, it removes the, um, the guilt and the shame. So when the guilt and the shame is out of the way, how does that affect your life? Yes, it affects your life in every way. Especially with the way you do things, the way you run your business, the way you, you do your, you know, um, your schoolwork, whatever it is. A purified conscience is, is awesome. So... We haven't read it, but go to Acts chapter 24. I've quoted it a couple of times, so I'm going to read it just so that you know it is there in the Bible. Um, <laughs> Acts 24 verse 16. Thank you, Jesus. And then we're going to speak about some practical things. Okay, Acts 24 verse 16. It says, Paul says this. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 
Therefore, I always exercise and discipline myself, mortifying my body, deadening my carnal affections, okay? Amplified, just so you know, remember, Amplified is written by a woman. That's why it's so much longer than all the other versions. Okay. But it's, it's really accurate, just so you guys know. To have a clear, listen, a clear, unshaken, blameless conscience, void of offense towards God and towards men. It's amazing that it says void of offense towards God because I, I understand how I can get offended, you know, a man can offend me, but how does God offend me? Oh, it's so easy to get offended by God. It's usually your own fault, though. God doesn't do anything to offend you. You just get offended. That's why they say offense is not given, it's taken. <laughs> you have to take offense. It's not necessarily given. You take it. Okay, so, but he says, I exercise a conscience that is void of offense. So when something is not lacquer, it affects your conscience. Man, if you've got a, it doesn't matter if it's towards men or towards God. If there's offense in your heart, in the offense in your conscience, it affects your prayer life. It affects your relationship with God. And you sit with this thing in your conscience. I'm not like it. So Paul actually says that I exercise myself. I exercise. I make sure that I don't have an offended conscience. I exercise my conscience so that it is void of offense. Your mission, 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 mission. But with the blood of Jesus, it's really simple. Because in John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3 is at verse 18. He says, if our conscience condemns us, God is greater than our hearts. So in moments of, okay, I am offended. I've missed it. Then I know, Lord, you're greater than this offense. <laughs> you're greater than, than my, my heart. And then I can receive mercy. Amen. All right, so let's go to Romans chapter, chapter 12. This will be some cool stuff. I hope this is really going to, that you're going to enjoy this. I like the practical stuff um, because I love if someone can put a how. <laughs> you know, that's nice to know, but how? Did you know like on YouTube and wherever, Google, the most searched stuff is how? You know, how can I do this? How am I going to get this right? So how is, how is important? Okay. Say hallelujah. All right. Chapter 12, verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, and beg of you, in view of all the mercy, say mercies, of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, um, presenting all your members and, and um, faculties as a living sacrifice. That's why God wants you to live. Jesus died so that you can live. Jesus doesn't die so that you could die. Jesus died so that you could live and be a living sacrifice. Reasonable, which is your reasonable service and spiritual worship. Don't be conformed to this world and this age. What does that mean? I love how Amplified says it fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. Why do we do the things we do? And if you, if you realize how, what's at play, why we do what we do, in a sense we've been conformed. It's amazing that you have different areas, for example. In the area that you live in, everybody kind of looks the same. Everybody kind of dresses the same. Why? That's weird. That's interesting. You go down to different suburbs, everybody's houses look the same. Everybody dresses a little bit different. Why? Because amongst these people, there's a confirmation that's happening. You're not even aware of it. It just happens. You know, for example, you don't need to be a skunk to smell like one. You just need to hang around skunks. And you'll smell like a skunk. So, so what happens is the, the company we keep, the people that we surround ourselves, come on, this is just... Normal living is not even preaching. This is something that everybody understands. If you hang around certain people, you're going to start doing certain stuff in a similar way. 
So, but Paul is trying to say, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be a, a victim of, you know, of that, that every, everything everybody else is doing, you just end up doing. Yeah. All right. So God wants us to be aware of what's happening around us. Yeah. And, and he wants us to be like conscious, to practice, practice our, <laughs> here we go, our, con- our consciousness. <laughs> All right, and to be where we are and to, to hear from Him. Because He doesn't want us to look like everybody else. He wants us to practice in such a way that, that we're hearing from God. And then what does He want you to do? Let's read on. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the entire renewal of your mind. Yo! The key says... So that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All of them are good. Some people say, well, you rather have good or will you have acceptable or will you have perfect. But all of them are good. Yeah, all of them are great. Um, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. I love this. So, He wants you to be transformed. Okay, metamorphosis. Think about, you know, a little caterpillar turning into a butterfly. All right, He wants you to turn into a butterfly. That's the whole thing about the, the resurrection. Jesus went into the... Um, it's the same concept. Goes into the tomb, he comes out, he's different. He's transformed. Come on, he goes into a mountain and he transforms he, he, in front of them. And he sees, wow, he's glowing and he's got um, golden hair and a little bit like Goku. I don't know if you guys watch DBZ. <laughs> Um, and, and all of a sudden they see him and he's like, wow, it's transformed. God wants you to be transformed. I think it's 1 Peter chapter 2, he says, but you are a peculiar people. You're a bit odd. You're a bit strange. You're not the same as everybody else. You know, um, have you ever had a pecu- peculiar person in the company of, of people that are all talking the same stuff? They just got, just got nothing to say or they are a thorn in the flesh. You know, changing the subject. I like to be, I don't know if I like to be peculiar, but I, I have a problem being peculiar sometimes. It's, but, but it's always good to hang out with peculiar people. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. So, I was listening to um, something, real gem came out. You know, like, why do we do what we do? Now, if you go to science and uh, you start talking about these weird things like, conscious mind, and you start talking about subconscious mind. I'm going to touch a little bit on them because this is the kind of stuff that I love because it's extremely practical. Remember, we did that one exercise where you close your eyes and you think about something happy and you think about something that makes you sad, you know? And for example, if I tell you, what are you going to do next week? Wednesday at one o'clock, you know? I know what you're going to be doing. He's going to be at Seattle at one o'clock. And if I ask you, what were you doing on Wednesday last week at one o'clock? You can go there and you can actually visit and see what you are doing. And yet you're still doing the same thing in church. You're sitting and you're listening. Okay, now that is the difference between your uh, conscious mind and your subconscious mind. So I'm going to explain it. So, for example, if you... Your subconscious mind, this is just science, this is not, but it gels in with um, Romans 12 by renewing your mind. It's good to make it practical so you understand. Why do I do what I do? Because in some way, how we've been conformed to think is that we, um, we kind of programmed. <laughs> it sounds strange, but to our behavior, these patterns and things, this confirmation that happens is just... We've been programmed. So, for example, can you remember, remember, we spoke about this yesterday. First time you get in the car, you can, they tell you, okay, now put it in first. And you put it in first and then you release the clutch and then the car is jumping all over the place. You remember that? And so now what's happening is you, you are going first, second, and everything you do, you are conscious of. So you're like in the moment. So you can't, when I tell you to drive for the first time, you can't visit next week Wednesday. Does that make sense? 
You can't visit last week Wednesday because your consciousness, you, you're alert to what you're doing now. But now, how many of you guys are alert to what you're doing when you're driving now? You're not anymore. You just, you can talk, put in first, second, third, fourth. Sometimes you can drive all the way from, from home to school or to, or to your work and you've got no idea how you got to work. What's that? That's your subconscious mind. That's driven you. That's just driving you and you're not even aware that it's happening. Come on, think about it. This is good stuff, all right? So now, th that's kind of what God wants to do. He wants to reprogram you. He wants you to be renewed so that you're not just going around day by day completely unconscious of what's happening around you. He wants you to kind of, okay, well, let's, let's reprogram you. I want you not to be like everybody else. I want you not to look like everybody else. I want you to be different. Amen. I want you to be transformed. So now God starts saying, okay, so how are we going to transform you? He says, don't be conformed <laughs> to the fashions, okay, fashioned after this world. But I want you to be transformed by how? Renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. That's why you're here today, because you're renewing your mind. As long as you're here. Because you can be here as a result of your subconscious, remember the whole thing, or else you could already be busy with the chicken that's in the oven and how you're going to spice it when, as soon as you finish with the, with the service, or else for those who's going to bry, who's brying this afternoon, just by the way? Because we don't have plans. <laughs> All right. So, so, um, so, see, so that's the thing. So God wants you to be in a moment, in a moment, and he wants you to, to be reprogrammed and say, okay, allow my words to come and to wash you. I love what Ephesians chapter 5 says. This is some of my favorite stuff. But he, he says, let's go there. I think it's so good. Ephesians 5. Thank you, Jesus. This is my favorite stuff. You can change your life. Alvina and uh, she, they're not here today, but we had a conversation about. She says what her what her dad does is um, he heard a message about if you can see it, you can have it. So so what he it's stuff I get so excited about. He says so before he makes like a big move in the business or if he get something that he that he desires. He starts writing it all over the place. Or he'll put like a, okay, she didn't say this, but this is what I understood. Like if he wants a certain car, he'll put that car somewhere in the house, like a little model or a little picture. And she says they grew up seeing him like do this. So that every time he starts speaking about something, he doesn't get it immediately. He makes it visible. And he starts seeing it. And when he starts seeing it, all, all of a sudden he's naturally... Can, can we use the word being transformed into, you know, into actually getting it? Is that, does that make sense? I'm, I know it's not transformed, doesn't work there, but what I'm trying to say with the word. So he starts to get it into his, into his subconscious mind, or let's just, you know, into his, into his being, into his soul, into, you know, so he's, he's renewing his mind. I love this kind of stuff. You know, so he says in Ephesians 5, he says, um, verse, verse 25, he says, uh, the second part, he says, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word. Yeah, the word, what the word will come and do. If you allow the Word of God to come and just to wash you, just to wash you. Have you seen if you just apply this in your, in your, you know, in your friendships, in your, you know, if you've got children, speak to your kids and instead of, instead of, like you see a problem, instead of pointing it out, you, you wash them with the words. You know, instead of saying, yes, you're doing bad, you start saying, yeah, I really liked what you did here. 
you start washing them, and you start reprogramming them to think that they can, they can do these things. Right? Is this all right? You like it? So, so God wants you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a responsibility that you have to renew your mind. Is you need to listen. <laughs> you need to hear. You need to see. Because if you can see, you can have it. But it takes... It takes a practice. They say that something like 90% of the day is just run by your subconscious mind. In the sense that you're just doing what you do every day. And so there's no creativity. There's no dreaming. There's no, um, there's no okay, I'm going to do this. How can I be effective here? How can I be in the moment now? It's just autopilot. Here you go again. Come on. Do you hear what I'm saying? So... Don't be fashioned after this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So how do we apply this biblically? Because we know what God wants. is not, look, He wants you to be successful. You can use this for success. You can use this for your business. You can use this to, to be whatever you want to one day. You can do that. But what is, what is it that God wants? What is it God wants? God wants, God wants, according to, we can read it, go to Romans chapter 5, and we'll read it there. And I'm, I'm nearly done, so um, make, sure, make sure you take this word with both arms and run with it. He says, just made me think of a story, I'll just tell you, for example, about, remember that old story about the 13 spanner? For those who never heard it before, I'm going to tell it again. The 13 spanners, you need a 13 spanner and you need a 10 spanner along with some, some cable tie and some duct tape and you should be good in life. But, um, but it's a very, very important because it's on most cars, you're using a 13, it's, on, it's a very useful spanner. So this, this one, <laughs> this, this one um, lady was married to this, this guy who's you with like a perfectionist, the spanners were, you know, if you go into a garage and they all lined out and they drew, so the right spanner goes to the right one. And uh, so, um, one day he goes into his garage and he sees the 13 spanner is gone. So he knows, he starts shouting, where is the 13 spanner? Goes, storms into the house, what did you do with the 13 spanner? Where is my 13 spanner and the wife retaliates and before you know it there's a big mess so so anyway so next time the, um, the wife goes to see someone and this guy says just love just love him you know just love it so so he says so she said okay well that's what she's gonna do so it wasn't long after that the 13 spanner was gone again and she hears him from a distance, where's my 13th spanner? And he comes into the kitchen, where's my 13th spanner? And she looks at him and she says, I love you. Where is my 13th spanner? She says, I really love you. <laughs> says, don't come to me with that, with that love stuff. Where's my 13th spanner? I really love you. I love you too. <laughs> you know, it's amazing what, well, just, I want you to see what's happening. Is that we're not just going into a cycle of the same thing. Yeah. Break it. Yeah. Break it. Yeah. Break it. Think differently and experience the transformation. Yeah. Practice it. It might be a little bit weird and a little bit strange. But it does bring change. And it does bring, um, it produces results. So we said in Romans 5, he says, Verse, um, I quoted it, but I'm going to read it. Verse 17. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive overflowing grace and the gift of righteousness reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Wow. So he says, well then, as one man's trespass, led to condemnation for all men. So one man's act of righteousness leads to right standing with God 
and life for all men. Wow! So I need to apply this. And if I apply this, I will rule and I will reign in this life. Stop being a victim. Stop being a victim. Don't be under the, you know, the system. <laughs> be above it. And that's what the grace of God does. And it comes and He says, okay, let's do this differently. Come on, let's get you transformed. Let's get you out of the cycle. Let's break the cycle. Let's break these habits, the things that's constantly get. So how do I do that? I renew my mind. How do I re- renew my mind? By hearing, by, by seeing, by seeing what God says. Let's close with a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It was a chapter 4. It was chapter 4. This stuff, what I'm speaking today, if you'll do it, <laughs> if you're challenged to do it, you're going you're gonna to experience the benefits. Guaranteed. 100%. Amen. 100% guaranteed. 100%. All right, so he says, um, verse 18. He says, We consider not and look, uh, look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things which are visible are temporal, but the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. So it sounds a little bit like it's not part of the message, but it's very much part of it message. You need to decide what's important. What are you going to spend your, your, um, your energy on? What are you going to spend on, uh, you know, like something that's, that's temporal and you're going to allow that to, 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 to run the rest of your life? Or are you going to allow God to do a new thing in you? Because he's always, he's always speaking. He's always saying something. He's always, um, he's in the business of, of restoration. And improve improving but if we have to we have to fix our minds in a sense to hear what he's saying and to bring restoration the previous scripture let's read it again i quoted it but we read he says our light momentary affliction is ever more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory i think that's so immensely encouraging and and also makes me think about think about the most destructive thing that happened in your life that's dominated your life for so long that's been that might have lasted five minutes or that might have lasted ten years whatever it is think about that now and what Paul says hey it's light <laughs> it's momentary it's a passing thing don't let it don't let it dominate your life don't let it don't let it determine the outcome of your life he says hey allow my words now to come and to bring a transformation that where you've been a victim you're going to be a victor <laughs> where you've been below you're now going to be above come on someone and and take it and apply it in your life and and you'll see it god wants you to rule and to reign <laughs> At home, I believe at home first is a good thing. And then also, if if home is good, it affects also the rest of your life. But no matter where you are, no matter where you are. So I speak the blood of Jesus to your conscience, to your hearts, that it purifies you and washes you. May there be a great alertness in you as you live your life and, and be conscious, be now in the moment. Don't be in tomorrow and yesterday. Be in what's happening right in front of you and say, God, how can I be, you know, how can I be a victor now? (laughs) How can I rule and reign? How do I hear what you're saying now? And have an appetite for, for, for what God is saying. If you can see it, you can have it. All right. I exercise a conscience that is void of offense towards God and men. So, um, that is righteous living. That is righteous living. Amen? So I trust that that blessed you. So let's stand together.
Okay, so you just repeat after me. I'm just going to make some affirmations and, and it's, that we can believe it and walk at you. So we say, I am <laughs> what the Bible says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I am righteous. I am free. I am not condemned. I have boldness before God. All things are possible to him who believes. I'm a believer. <laughs> I will rule and reign in this life by the grace of God. I speak to every situation in my life. I am not a victor. A uh, victim, excuse me. <laughs> I am a victor. I am more than a conqueror. Alright? So I'm just going to pray. And I will, over every word, you need to repeat that over your life. And Father, I thank you for these words. That they come and they wash us. Lord, that they cause us to be peculiar people. That they cause a transformation. It makes us look different. It makes us talk different. It makes us act different. And I, I thank you that we'll, we'll walk in a, in a consciousness and an alertness of what you're saying. That we'll be alert to what's happening in our conscience and in our minds. That we can serve God with boldness. That we can live out a righteous life. I thank you, Father, that, that you speak through visions and dreams and desires. And, and in everyone's life right now, Father, that you'll... He'll begin to quicken ideas, quicken the way out, quicken whatever it is in their hearts and that we can, we can make our way now to, 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 to transformation. In Jesus' name, I thank you for your blood, the blood of Jesus, the grace of Jesus that comes from, from, from Christ. That man, that is an unfair advantage that gets us there faster and, um, and then what other people will go. And I thank you, Father. May it be evident. May people look to, to this church and see that they've been with Jesus. May they look and see, yeah, this person spent time with Jesus. He looks like Jesus. He talks like Jesus. So this must be a Christian. And I thank you, Father. Thank you for entrusting us with this ministry of reconciliation that you want to reach the world, that you want to reach the lost that you want to demonstrate it through your through your children we thank you for that today in the name of jesus amen amen amen, amen.